This morning, embattled music mogul Sean Diddy Combs will remain behind bars on charges that include sex trafficking and racketeering conspiracy after a second judge overseeing his federal criminal case denied him bond once again. The fight continues. Uh, we're not we're, we're we're not we're not giving up by a long shot. Outside the New York City courthouse, his lawyer defiant. He believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. The judge ruling the bail package presented by Combs's lawyer was insufficient, siding with prosecutors who called Combs a threat to society, adding there is no condition that would assure that the rapper would not obstruct justice. A major topic of discussion ahead of the ruling, this troubled 2016 video that shows Combs brutally beating his then girlfriend, singer Cassie who prosecutors say was attempting to escape from one of Combs' so-called freak-offs, elaborated coerced sex parties that he often recorded. Hey, I'm Hallie, and tonight we are learning in just the last few minutes that a federal judge is now refusing to grant Sean Diddy Combs bail. Instead, he's going straight to jail tonight after Diddy pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking and racketeering. Want to show you some of these brand new court sketches coming into us, like literally in the last 90 seconds. This is Combs in court after prosecutors arrested him at a hotel in Manhattan. It's where he's apparently been living for weeks, according to what a person familiar with the move tells NBC News. All of it, a tipping point now in that sprawling federal investigation into the superstar's alleged years of sex crimes dating back to 2009 as we're just getting in some new and deeply disturbing details about the allegations against him and what looks like a massive criminal operation, allegedly, at least 50 victims and witnesses so far. And at the center of it, these hours and days long sex acts known as, in their words, freak offs that Combs supposedly orchestrated to abuse his victims. Criminals do crimes with criminals. I've never been a criminal. You understand what I'm saying? Gotcha. So now, uh, if you're looking to answer something about Puff, Puff ain't the Puff. Puff had different phases of his life that y'all don't understand. And let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. You understand? First you got Puff Daddy, who had Daddy's house and the parties and things like that. Then you had Puff. You understand? Then you had Diddy. Then you had brother love and then love. I had Puff around the stage when he was Puff Daddy and Puff and some of Diddy. Not the new Diddy that they gave the Diddler and everything like that. So he ain't the guy, he wasn't the guy that y'all see now back then when he was in Harlem. You understand? And now that you've handed over a few kids yourself to make sure they get fixed up just like you, like I don't know. It's just, I don't know if it's the mediocrity or that you're just mad that they you first. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it's just, it, it's, how do you accept an award for being something that you know you're not? How do you do that? How does Common sit around and pretend like he's a prolific black rapper when all you've done is line up amazing black women to move them out of the way when they don't go the way the Illuminati wants them to go, like Lauren Hill, like me, like Tiffany Haddish. That's three women who are real as who used to deal with you and their careers changed after you. Jaguar Wright and Gene Deal, two outspoken critics of the music industry, have once again turned their attention to Sean Diddy Combs, this time reacting to explosive rumors surrounding an alleged $50 million freak-off contract. The controversial contract, reportedly tied to wild parties and extravagant lifestyle choices, has fueled further speculation about Diddy's private life and business dealings. Wright, known for her no-holds-barred revelations, and Deal, a former bodyguard for Diddy and the notorious B.I.G., offer their insights on what they believe is a larger pattern of excess and manipulation in the entertainment world. Their reactions are both shocking and eye-opening, raising questions about power, control, and the dark side of fame. 
he was the guy that our crew chased down the street because he was trying to be a part of it and he ran. You understand? We brought him back, beat the shit out of him, hit him in the head with cake spoon with champagne and all the other shit like that. He was wanted to be a part of us. He was the one who used to beg, don't go to the party, please, please, I'm on my way. I'm on my way so he could walk in the club with us. You understand? So to answer that question, bruh, you're not doing nothing that's gonna cost my livelihood. You understand? You're not gonna do anything in front of me to cost my livelihood. You understand? Now, have I seen some shit? I seen a dude come up in the club and blow somebody's head off. I see the smoke running through the crowd trying to get to the lights. You understand? At a New Year's Eve party. So now, I see this guy laying on, his, on the ground with his head tore down to the white meat. Did I know who did it? No. Did somebody tell me it's about to happen? Yes, they did. Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Disgraced music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, once known for his lavish lifestyle and living large in his multi-million dollar mansions, has a new home as he awaits trial in his federal sex trafficking case. Last week, the Bad Boy Founders defense team unsuccessfully fought to keep the music producer out of federal jail after his arrest. Now his new digs once housed other high-profile inmates, including R. Kelly, Fetty Wap, Sam Bankman Freed and Ghislaine Maxwell. Diddy is currently housed at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York. A stark difference from the glitz, glamour, and wealth in Hollywood and Star Island in Miami Beach, Florida. But MDC Brooklyn has been described as hell on earth with horrifying conditions. The facility which now houses Diddy opened in the early 90s and is the only federal jail in New York City after the Bureau of Prisons closed its Metropolitan Correctional Center in 2021 after many issues came to light in the wake of Jeffrey Epstein's suicide just two years earlier. Sean Diddy Combs is locked up in a federal jail that has been plagued by harsh conditions and violence. The Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn has seen multiple deaths in recent years. An inmate was stabbed to death in July, and several others have died by suicide. It's these reasons, among others, that Combs' lawyers are fighting to get him out of there. They want him released on bail, rather than being kept in jail while he awaits trial on sex trafficking charges. Combs is just the latest high-profile defendant to be locked up at MDC Brooklyn. Before him, there were R. Kelly, Elaine Maxwell, and crypto scammer Sam Bankman Freed. Maxwell complained about her treatment at the facility which included round-the-clock checks in the wake of her associate Jeffrey Epstein's jail suicide. A few years ago, a week-long power outage in the dead of winter left detainees in drab, cold conditions. Judges have also raised alarms. They've pressed the Bureau of Prisons for status updates and implored the agency to fix things. One judge even refused to send some defendants to the jail. For now, Combs is one of about 1,200 people locked up at MDC Brooklyn. He's the highest profile detainee at a place that's been described as hell on earth. Sean Diddy Combs is eager to secure his release from federal custody, having proposed a substantial $50 million package for bail until his trial commences. His legal team has submitted this offer to the federal court, showcasing a remarkable array of assets he is prepared to pledge as collateral for his release. According to the docs, Diddy says his mansion on Miami's Star Island would be offered up as collateral. That's worth $48 million. 
and his mother's Miami home would cover the remaining two mil. In addition to the hefty $50 million bail proposal, Diddy has indicated his willingness to accept strict travel restrictions, limiting his movements to Florida, New York, and New Jersey. This arrangement suggests that he plans to reside in Miami, where he would likely enjoy a more relaxed lifestyle while preparing for his upcoming trial in the New York area. To further appease the authorities and ensure compliance, Diddy has also offered to wear a GPS monitoring device, allowing federal agents to keep a close eye on his whereabouts at all times. This level of cooperation underscores his desire to regain freedom while navigating the serious legal challenges ahead, demonstrating both a commitment to complying with the court's demands and a strategic approach to managing his situation during this turbulent period. Now to the latest after Sean Diddy Combs was indicted, the media mogul pleading not guilty to multiple charges of racketeering and sex trafficking. And today he will be back in court trying to get released on bail. Local 10's Trent Kelly is live near Diddy's residence in Miami Beach with the developing details. Trent. Yeah, that's right, Alexis. In fact, for the second day in a row now, Sean Diddy Combs is spending his day in a New York City jail cell rather than sitting here at his Star Island mansion. That's after a judge yesterday denied his legal team's request for a $50 million bond. That issue expected to come up again later today during a bond appeal hearing. And it comes as we now hear from a former assistant to the music megastar. I feel the justice has been served. New reaction from a former assistant to Sean Diddy Combs, who remains in a New York City jail after a judge denied a $50 million bond proposal yesterday. Combs expected back in court today for a second bond hearing. You know, you go back and you look at Hollywood and you've got everybody talking about that Harvey Weinstein and Les Moonbees, they were only the latest of generations of violation that happened when people chase greed in entertainment and music they make compromises and parents tell their kids when kids would get involved in this. Oh, you know what? You don't want to look at the gymnast. Remember, the doctor was violating Nasser gymnasts or whatever. And some was. of the yeah. parents said, well, stay away from him. But you don't want to be off the team. It'll ruin your Olympic chance. And they finally, God bless them, they stood up to the National Gymnastics Board and everything about it. This is people chasing greed and there's a price. And parents have been enabling it. You know, Vinny, God bless you, you're talking about would you as a parent do it? A lot of parents have looked that in the eye, that monster in the eye, and they said no. They didn't want to blow their kid's chance for fame and they let it go. This is about chasing greed. It was allegedly planned and control the sex performances, which he called freak offs. And he often electronically recorded them. Prosecutors say Combs punched and kicked his victims to try to keep them under control. He'd also, they say, fill them up with drugs like ketamine and ecstasy for long periods of time, even using incriminating records to try to manipulate his victims. Prosecutors say they discovered this wide range of evidence against Combs in several raids. They found things, they say, like AR-15s, narcotics, more than a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricants. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. In a striking turn of events, Diddy revealed that he has been preparing for his arrest well in advance. He cleared the remaining $18 million mortgage on his Miami home, positioning it as collateral for his bail proposal. 
Furthermore, he disclosed that he had informed federal authorities back in May about his intention to sell his private jet. Although he has yet to find a buyer, he has committed to parking the aircraft in Los Angeles while he remains in Florida. This proactive approach highlights Diddy's strategic planning and determination to navigate his legal troubles while maintaining a semblance of stability in his life. No matter what island you can go slink off to or no matter who you can pay off, it's not working this time and justice is actually being served. It took a while, but it is being served. The music mogul arrested on Monday accused of using his massive business empire to run a criminal sex enterprise. According to the 14-page indictment, prosecutors say Combs abused, threatened, and coerced women and others around him to fulfill his sexual desires in what Combs called freak-offs. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. The charges come after a year-long investigation and the release of this video showing the hip-hop icon beating his ex-girlfriend at a Los Angeles hotel. Earlier this year, federal agents raided the 54-year-old's mansions in both LA and Star Island, authorities seizing several AR-15s, large-capacity magazines, and supplies for the freak-offs, including one thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles hotel when the victim was attempting to flee. So I, I think we have a, a good shot tomorrow. Tomorrow we argue in front of the district court judge whose case this is. Uh, today we argue in front of a magistrate judge whose case this is not. Um, we'll never have this magistrate as our judge again. But tomorrow we argue in front of Judge Carter, um, and it's Judge Carter's case um, till the end. So. Hope springs eternal, um, and but I think we have strong arguments, and I think we have a good chance. Well, and what prosecutors are arguing is not only does your client pose a flight risk, because obviously he, he's incredibly wealthy, has access to planes and a, and a lot of staff, even though you said he turned over his passport to you months ago, they were also worried about him being able to interfere with witnesses and calling them. And so I guess the question is, how do you assure the court that that won't happen if, if prosecutors are saying, this is someone who's attempted to bribe security staff and has already threatened and interfered with witnesses. So I think that the most important thing, um, even more important than the passport, is that Mr. Combs came to New York on September 5th. As soon as we realized that this indictment was going to be coming down in a matter of weeks, maybe months, but sometime soon. Right, we were in there for about two hours as the Justice Department from the Southern District of New York laid out their case, very similar to what you saw in the indictment, saying why he should not be released because they say that he is a flight risk, he could leave the country, and also that he has a history of obstructing justice. They also pointed to how serious these crimes were, that it, with previous allegations of sex trafficking like R. Kelly and Jeffrey Epstein, the judges also denied bail in that case. But his defense laid out a very lengthy rebuttal to all of that. We heard them say that this is different from Jeffrey Epstein and R. Kelly because there are no minors being alleged in the indictment here. They also say that these acts were consensual and they point to victim number one who's named over and over again, who they say is someone within a 10 year relationship with Combs that was toxic but consensual. They said that this person actually tried to sell this same story as book rights to Combs to try to get it out of the media's eye. Jaguar Wright has made shocking allegations that Sean Diddy Combs has reportedly sold a contentious freak-off party video for an eye-popping $500 million on the dark web. 
In a recent interview, Wright, who has garnered attention for her explosive claims about the now embattled rapper, delved into the potential ramifications of this sale. She hinted that Diddy's decision to engage in such a risky transaction may stem from a dire financial situation, suggesting he could be facing significant cash flow issues. The last freak-off tape that just got sold on the dark net which I monitored went for $500 million, Wright said in a recent interview which is going viral on social media. Wright's assertions add another layer of intrigue to Diddy's ongoing legal troubles and highlight a broader narrative of desperation that could be fueling his actions. When asked whether Diddy is attempting to protect his inner circle or if his friends are the ones safeguarding him, Wright responded candidly. He's selling it because he needs the cash, she stated, alluding to a controversial event in Calabasas that reportedly captured some questionable moments. This comment not only underscores her belief that Diddy's financial situation is precarious, but also suggests that the controversial video may hold more than just sensational footage. It could be a desperate bid for liquidity amidst mounting legal and personal challenges. Wright's insights imply a deeper narrative of survival, where the lines between protection and exploitation become increasingly blurred in the high-stakes realm of fame. If he was not there, I can only imagine how much worse things would have been and could have gotten. Right. This is the man. And like I told these guys now, people who commit crimes commit crimes with criminals. Yeah, they do. I ain't never been no criminal. No. And I'm never, I'm never going to let anybody get harmed. I'm always intersecting. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm ten. I'm I'm ten steps in front of you before it happens. That's the other thing. No, sing my song. I'm gonna sing it, but I wanna say, I wanna say this, and then I'm gonna sing it. Huh. In positions that we've been in, and the people that we've been around, mm. you had it made. So did I. Mm. There was a disagreement in the way things were going. You went your own way. Right. I went my own way. If it was really. If we were terrible people, you don't walk away. You, you stay. It was me. You were the man yeah. of all, period. Imagine, you know, as he went on into his billionaire status, all yeah. the things. I could have just kept my mouth closed. I believe that women have been coming out, but nobody was listening. You understand? Nobody wanted to hear it. Did you hear that guy Van from M? From uh, from what you call that show was on TMZ. He said somebody told him the story about Gina years ago, but he didn't want to hear it, and he wasn't going to take it to TMZ because they was in partnership, or they Diddy was in power, so he wasn't going to bring it up. Yo, you know how many girls have came to me about other artists? Women have always been telling these stories and wanted somebody to talk to or somebody to do something about it, but nobody would do it. No, the police wouldn't take it. You understand? Lawyers wouldn't take it. Not lawyers see a paycheck. They taking it. And that's what it's about. During the interview, Jaguar Wright claimed that the videos being sold on the dark web include high-profile figures like Justin Bieber, Chris Brown, Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, and Drake. However, it's crucial to emphasize that none of these celebrities have been connected to Diddy's alleged wrongdoings or any dubious associations with him. While some fans entertained the possibility of Wright's assertions regarding dark web transactions, many others criticized her for name-dropping and perpetuating sensationalized rumors about other artists. Following the arrest of Sean Diddy Combs on charges of sex trafficking and racketeering, shocking revelations have emerged from his former bodyguard. This significant development comes in the wake of Diddy's indictment in New York, where he faces serious accusations, including racketeering, sex trafficking, and facilitating transportation for prostitutes. If convicted, Diddy could potentially face decades behind bars. The allegations against him surfaced six months after federal officials conducted searches at his mansions in Los Angeles and Miami, where they reportedly uncovered over 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant, 
allegedly linked to the notorious freak-off sessions. Prosecutors allege that during these gatherings, Diddy would sedate women and compel them to engage in prolonged sexual acts with male prostitutes. The gravity of these accusations paints a troubling picture of a high-profile figure entangled in a web of alleged criminality and abuse. According to Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, who provided security for the rap mogul throughout the 1990s, Diddy allegedly kept tapes of politicians participating in his infamous freak-off sessions. Deal suggests that Diddy's recent arrest may be tied to a broader corruption scandal currently shaking New York City politics. His claims imply that the situation could extend beyond personal misconduct, potentially implicating powerful figures in a network of illicit activities. During his appearance on the Art of Dialogue podcast, Gene Deal asserted that Diddy's prosecution could unveil the involvement of prominent figures and celebrities within New York City. He suggested that the investigation might lead to revelations that could shake the foundations of the entertainment industry and political realm alike. He declared, This is all bigger than Diddy, without providing further details about the alleged tapes. When asked if any renowned individuals were on the purported freak-off tapes, Deal replied, Diddy gave celebrity parties, so what do you think? The bodyguard claimed Diddy was a victim of other influential music industry players early in his career, adding that Puff wasn't born a monster, he was made into a monster due to what happened to him. To keep it frank, he was doing to other people what was done to him. That's a learned behavior, he added. Calling the rapper's high-profile arrest the result of his karma, he said Diddy's detention will be remembered as one of the greatest tragedies in hip-hop history. What are your thoughts on Jaguar Wright and Gene Deal exposing Diddy's alleged $50 million freak-off contract? Do you really believe Diddy could face 100 years in prison? That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.